Welcome back. This is National Geographic Weekend. I'm Boyd Matson. You may remember the famous gray parrot, Alex, because this is a parrot that was, every time they talked about language learning abilities of animals, Alex was always brought out. It, it had maybe a 150-word vocabulary, something like that. The parrot died recently. But the gray parrot uh, is very popular because it, it's smart. It knows a lot of words, so it's a popular pet. And what that means trouble for the gray parrots in the wild. Steve Boyce has been uh, working with parrots, trying to save parrots, studying parrots for most of his life, and not just the gray parrot, but other parrots in Africa trying to protect them, particularly the Cape parrot, the most endangered of the birds. One of our National Geographic grantees joins us now. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Boyd. Uh, great to be on the show. Everybody loves the gray parrot, but they want them in their house or their home, and they're getting them there illegally. It's having a huge impact on the population in the wild, right? Absolutely. Um, we've been seeing local extinctions in Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, the DRC. Basically, throughout their range, they are disappearing. Uh, we're calling it uh, the African silence or dead zones. It's really quite sad. And the numbers over the past 20 years, it's estimated maybe two to two and a half million gray parrots have been removed from the wild. Absolutely. Uh, in the region of 20% of the global population are removed from the wild each year. Now, this is done using um, nylon snares. They use nets. They use perches with glue on them, basically any way they can get at them. This is artisanal trappers, local people, or even very organized commercial operations taking large numbers out of the wild. So the 20%, that's anywhere from fifty to 100,000 a year. Obviously, that's not sustainable. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a direct extinction threat. And uh, we'll be very lucky if this continues uh, to have African greys in the wild in the next 10 to 15 years. It's already banned to have these wild-caught birds brought into certain countries like the United States. But if it's an offspring of a, a bird, if it was born in captivity, then it's okay. It is. It's, legally, it's legal to transport and sell those birds around the world. Um, what typically happens is the wild-caught stock are sent into countries with poor regulations, countries like South Africa, where I work, Sri Lanka, Bahrain. Uh, where they have what are called bird mills, um, where they take these wild-caught birds that are primed and ready to breed, um, they stick them in the dark, change their diet, and remove the eggs. And if you keep on removing eggs and she feels that she's ready to relay more, she will, and she'll continue doing so. They use them as breeding stock. Yes, and, th and that's the loophole. Uh, so the wild-caught birds are used as breeding stock to produce clearly captive-bred, wonderful little pets that are exported in their thousands. For example, South Africa imported over 5,000 wild-caught African greys in 2009, but we exported 26,000 in the same year, just showing how product productive these, uh, these bird mills are and how much money these people are making, noting that the birds are sold for over $2,500 each. And it's, the reason they have to keep catching so many is they don't have a long life when they're shoved in the dark and just told to give birth every, every couple of months. That's a fact. So they live for three to five years before they stop laying eggs, and they're pretty much useless to, the, to, to those owners, to those breeders. And they're either laundered into the, the pet trade, and that'll be a really nasty pet that won't last long, or they are euthanized and then replaced with more wild-caught birds, which are a lot cheaper to source from the wild. You're getting about five years' life. And what's the, the normal life expectancy for a parrot is much longer. It's like a human life expectancy almost. Absolutely. I mean, uh, African gray parrots live for, we, we, we estimate, in the region of 60 to 65 years in the wild. And I've actually met an 85-year-old African grey in captivity, crazy as a hatter, but alive and, and enjoyed, <laughs> enjoyed a full life. <laughs> like all of us, it, the older it gets, the crazier it gets. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but, I mean, African grey parrots, they are intelligent. They develop at the same rate as we do. They go through a teenage phase. They're only ready to start breeding after the age of about 7 to 10 years old. So they're a little bit faster than us, but they're, that's all that's in the wild. Um, and that's what these trappers target. It's part of... Their policy is to stress the birds out, weed out the old and young that they caught in, in random. So, I mean, the losses in the wild are even more than what we see at the borders and in these trade numbers. We're talking with Steve Boyce, who is a National Geographic grantee and works uh, trying to protect parrots in Africa, uh, trying to stop this uh, removal of the gray parrot from the wild and turned into essentially breeding birds uh, illegally and forced into this. Well, it's like a, a slave trade. They're captured. They're forced to, to lay eggs. The eggs taken away. It's a short life expectancy, and it's greatly reducing the population in the wild, so that people can have a pet. And as we said at the beginning, they're really a smart bird. Yes, and 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 we're taking that away from them. 
I would say an African grey for the whole of its life has the kind of the abilities of a two or three year old child. So that's very interactive. It's learning about you the whole time. It's forming bonds with people and members of the family. And that's the kind of thing it's having in the wild, but a lot more intense where it's competing with other birds. We call them singles clubs where they're meeting new ones until they find the partner that they'll keep for the rest of their life. And maybe one of them gets caught in those traps um, and that's separated. And that, uh, that literally they become heartbroken. That is, that is what these birds are like and that's what we're doing to them. And when they have one, one that's been raised in captivity and it's taken as a pet, if somebody works with it, I know Alex was an exception to learn 150 words, but typically do, do most of them learn a couple of words? Yes. I mean, they, they can construct sentences uh, towards the end of their lives after about 20 years. Um, they will mimic the sounds of doors, anything around them in their environment. Very, very intelligent birds. They, they will speak to get things. One, of, one bird that was trained for years and years and years, similar to, to, to Irene's one, actually had a vocab, you know, a substantial one, 50 to 100 words. And then when it constructed its first sentence, what it said was, I want to go tree, which was quite poignant. Um, and then a few days later, he actually died when he didn't get that. And his last wish, I want to go free. I want to go tree. Tree, which is like free. I want to go tree. I want to get out of this house. I want out of the cage. I want to go to the tree. And and they do. I mean, it's not just memorizing words, as, as her, the test done around Alex proved. They were they were putting them into an, words into order to make a sentence, and, and a sentence with meaning. And it recognized shapes. It could name shapes. It wasn't just a memorization. There was a small, limited, like you say, that of a two- or three-year-old, but there was a thought process behind the language. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's been proven time and time again. I mean, even with the Cape parrot that I work with, they, they, they can do the same. I mean, most parrots, given the opportunity, do do that. They, they, their societies in the wild are highly advanced, highly interactive. They need all of those tools. Their vocal cords are developed to be able to mimic all these sounds because they use all of that in the wild. And that's a, that's a very, very special thing for us to protect and appreciate. It's hard to share with other people, but it's there, and, and we must know that. And we need, again, as often the case on these, uh, by the time it comes to our attention, it's at a, a critical point. If you're removing, as we say, 20% a year, it does not give the gray parrot long in the wild. So thanks to the work of Steve Boyce, something is being done to try to prevent this illegal. It is illegal to take these parrots from the wild like this and turn them into these... Uh, breeding farms. Uh, Steve, thanks for updating us on the work you're doing. Thanks so much, Boyd. 